Let me introduce you to my Warco drill press. But could it be improved? In an earlier episode you saw me make this Z height adjust mechanism so it made the outer housing and the central crank go through the centre there and it ended up looking like this. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that so it's almost finished. We then did a dry fit just to make sure it was going to fit on the machine and uh, yes it does, it just about clears the electrical cabinet there but there's one thing missing, that's the drive system. Okay, next we'll have a look at the boring out got the two bevel gears so we need to open the bores up it's uh, 12 millimeters on one and 10 on the other and then we'll put a 5 millimeter keyway through and then a grub screw to lock that in place and we've got our bits and pieces for our broaching set here so we've got a broaching guide we've got a little bit of keyway left yeah five millimeter keyway that's in here and then the broach itself and some shims in there Some, uh, somewhere in there, some shim stock just to pack that out. So we'll get onto that a little bit later. First of all, let's take these over to the lathe, see how concentric the bore or this outer part is, because I think that's where I'm going to hold it, is with the uh, teeth. I'm assuming that's reasonably concentric, then we'll run the bores through. Right, let's head over to the lathe. And if we run it quite slowly, you can see. The teeth look pretty concentric, however, the bore uh, is not very concentric, so you might be able to see the hole there. I just started to just put a drill in there just to check, and it was kind of jumping around and shaking like that, so you can see it's eccentric. So what we'll do, we'll open it up as little as we can, but just enough to get the smallest boring bar in, and then uh, I'll use the boring bar to try and get a, a true hole. So you can see the uh, drill wobbling around quite a lot there. I just need to open it up just enough to sort of get the boring bar in. So I took a few passes with the boring bar and then just kept checking with the two point internal micrometer. Yep, we're on track. So we've bored the hole out to size on the lathe, now we need to do the keyway. So I've just touched off both sides and then that end there. This is a three millimeter end mill and we need a five millimeter pocket. So I'm just gonna manually go in plunging each time and taking a little bit away and then clear the sides. And then when we're done here, we'll take it over to the press and we'll use the brooch just to take the last little bit out. Okay, here we go. Yeah, see how we got on. So this is a bit of uh, five millimeter keyway. It won't fully go in, but it should be pretty close. So I just left about 0.02 on the sides, and there's a little bit about 0.1 at the top. But yeah, I think we're just gonna it's just gonna go fine. So in my experience, uh, the least you can leave for the broaching to do the better. Uh, just makes life a bit easier pressing it through. Right, let's go over to the press and take it to final size. 
Okay, so the way this works is we've got most of it, uh, you see we've got most of it machined out, so we use this little brooch guide. I'll just turn this a while back from just a piece of mild steel. So it's just got the right uh, depth there so that the teeth come out just the right amount, and basically that goes into there. That's the guide. And then we just try and make sure we line it up pretty close on there. And then the brooch itself, just a series of cutting teeth like that and they start small at one end and they get larger at the other so it's kind of tapered like on an angle so as you push it through it'll uh, engage more and more teeth and then you pull it out again put some shims in the back here to pack it out smooth it advance it along a bit and then push through again till you get to the correct depth right so let's set this up we've got plenty of oil needs to go on uh, ideally you should clamp it but I think we're gonna get away with this because there's very little to take out and we need to make sure we always keep it centered on the ram and just keep backing off every now and again to make sure we're definitely not bending this because these just love to fly across the workshop if you get it wrong. Right, let's set it up and we'll bring you in close. Okay, uh, I've just put the first shim in because uh, that, that was uh, too much clearance. Okay, we'll make sure we put plenty of oil on. Help it on its way and at the back as well. Right, I've just changed the setup because I was running out of travel, couldn't quite get the brooch under here. So we've got one shim in the back. We'll just get that on the little daisy wheel there. And that cut out. <coughs> Let's give that a try. That feels better. Okay, I've just run it through a couple of times and then uh, just had to give it a little bit extra, a bit of foil around that shim there. It's basically whatever it takes really just to get that final dimension. And a quick measure. So we're shooting for 14.7. Uh, I can get it in the bore. Nope. Somewhere. Uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, it's about there and on that side. Fourteen seven six seven seven. Yep. Okay, so that's fine. A little over's fine. And then in terms of the key, so this is a five millimeter piece of key. Tight, but it does, does fit. Uh, might need to just lightly dress that with a file, just get that. Yeah, it's just gonna go. Yeah, we'll just dress up that last bit. Right, happy with that. So there's a keyway done so now we just need the set screw in here so we'll go back to the CNC machine and set that up as you can see I've got the bevel gear in the vise I've put the other one in the other side just to equalize the pressure on the jaw to keep it centralized uh, we'll just touch off this jaw and this one then we know where the center is and then we'll touch off the back of that and then we can come in just the right amount and then uh, we'll drill down there I'm just going to use a three millimeter end mill just to give the pilot hole and then we'll open it out and um, tap the thread in it Right, let's get started.
Okay, let's get these over to the workbench and finish boring them out and tapping the threads. Okay, so here's the two gears with the pilot hole in. And there's the one with the key wear. I tried to get it about 90 degrees, but it's not that critical. Right, let's get these clamped in. So I've just got a little bit of um, protective aluminium there just to protect those teeth from the hardened jaws. So get that lined up. Where's the hole? There we go. Get that pretty vertical. Okay, so we're going to tap these M5. So we need our M5 kit, which is this one. So we've got a 4.2 millimeter drill and we use these. I quite like these. These are made by Europa Tool and they have different color bandings depending on the material you're trying to tap. They're also the spiral fluted type, which I really like as well. Seem to make a really nice job and they're very, very sharp. Just try and get that square as we can. Just get it started. Looks good. One down, one to go. So there they are, both tapped. Just need a little bit of a clean up inside. And they're done. Okay, so now we need to machine the keyway. So there's two ways we could do that. One is we could come in from the end and machine basically an open slot. The other way is a pocket. Now the open slot is a lot easier, but the downside is that the key itself could vibrate and rattle out over time and fall out and you'd lose it and lose drive. So to avoid that, what you normally do is, um, you see the keyway at the top there, you'd normally put the set screw at the top here so it locks down onto the key itself and then it can't come out and then you can just do the simple open slot. Now you can see there I've got very little material at the top there to put a thread in. I guess I might have just about got away with it. Um, but I put it in at the side at 90 degrees instead. Now that means the key itself is not secured and could vibrate out and fall out. So uh, we're going to use the pocket method which just means we're just going to need to plunge down. We'll just leave a little bit of material on the end and just machine a pocket out there. Right, so we've got the end mill choked up fairly high. I needed to have it sticking out a little bit just so when I get to this point I can clear the jaws. Um, but I think we're going to be okay. Um, I think we'll probably get away without uh, any kind of support at this end, it's not hanging out very much. So let's uh, centre on these two sides, touch off the top, and then we're going to go down 2.5 millimetres and open it out to 5 millimetres. Alright, let's set it up and get going. Okay, so I've roughed it out, I've gone down to 2.5, that is the final depth, but um, on the width uh, I wanted to go plus or minus one, and I've gone 0.98 one side and 0.95 the other, so we'll clean it up, we'll measure the key, just check exactly how big it is, and we want to bring this in, uh, we'll use some gauge blocks, we'll bring it in just so it's a nice gentle fit on the key, because I need to be able to get it in and out to assemble it to get the bearing past it. So let's clean this up, measure the key, and measure this, and then take it from there, and see how much we've got left to take off. OK, 
Okay, so we'll check it on two sides just in case. We'll check it in a couple of places, especially towards the end where I'm actually going to be cutting the bit of key off. Yeah, it's basically five. Looks like five that way. Okay, and the other way. Oh yeah, so that's five as well. Okay, so we know what we're aiming for. Um, let's get the gauge blocks out now and set them up and measure the slot, and then we can walk the dimension in. So this is a set of gauge blocks that Banggood sent me to review in one of the old videos. It's one of the um, cart build videos when I was building the differential. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to have a look at the review. Um, but basically, yeah, I've been I've uh, been very happy with them. Um, seem to be very accurate. The only one thing to note, as I pointed out in the video, is, yeah, let's take the five there. So they have that working surface there, which is that very mirrored surface, and you can see the dimension written on there. Uh, but then the non-working surfaces are not ground or lapped or anything. They're just uh, probably straight off the mill or whatever they are. Um, so I think that's just where they've cut the costs there. But apart from that, in terms of the working surfaces, I found them to be very accurate. So go and have a look at the review if you're interested. Right, let's get these set up and we'll measure the width of the slot. So we'll start with 4.95. Now, you've got to do a little bit of working out to get the best combination because you haven't got uh, 0.05 thickness gauge blocks that would be very difficult to handle so we'll start with the two so we'll do a two a 1.9 and a 1.05 that should give us uh, 4.95 so we'll start there and then we can go uh, 4.96 4.97 4.8 99 just see where we are on the slot I want to get to I think we'll probably just try and hit five or just a very slight amount over just so it's a gentle press fit in so we'll start with a 2, make sure that's clean, add the 1.9, takes to 3.9, bring those together, Here's our first bit, and then we want to add, let's go 1.05, so that should give us 4.95. Just press down on that, get all the air out, twist. And if, it, if there's a lot of resistance to sliding, then it's engaged. Okay, so this is 4.95. Yeah, so that won't actually, uh, it won't actually go, so probably, let's try 4.94. It's just starting to go. Right, let's open it up. Okay, so I've basically just been repeating that. I didn't show it all on video. So I've just been opening it up ever so slightly either side and then checking. And we've just got our 5mm gauge block there. And it's just a nice snug fit. Like that. So that's okay. So that means we can tap it in, it will stay in place and we can get it out if we need to, as we need to assemble or disassemble the bearing. Right, so what we need to do now, we'll turn it around, I've got an M4 or 4mm keyway to do the other side and I've got one on the ball screw, so I'll repeat those and then bring you back when I've got all those machines. Basically the same operation. So, see you in a minute. Okay, so finished our keyways off, there's the 4mm keyway there that drives the uh, handle. Then we've got our 5mm pocketed keyway that way that drives the bevel gear. So we need to put this together in the right order. So first, yeah, that goes through there. Okay, 
and we may as well let's put the bearing on now so we make sure that's going to work so this should be a nice gentle fit in here so it can come apart again easily obviously we haven't tried it out yet but hopefully I'll just use these to press it home back in a minute okay we've got that flush now so it will come out but I'll have to tap that pretty hard or press on that it'll press on the inner race but I've got lots of spare ones just in case I ever need to take it apart right so uh, let's get the handle on next so now we'll put the, the washer on there with the raised part and then the key where is it there it is I've just put a light chamfer on the edge of that key there and that will be at the base and that means if ever I need to lever it out with a screwdriver or whatever I can get in there and uh, remove it easily so I've actually put that on the wrong end well done you watched me do that didn't you okay let's just put that on that end and then that key with that chamfer goes down and the chamfer's outboard that's fine Goes to there, and the, the handle next. Come on, there's a key in there somewhere. There we go. Okay, and the washer. And lock nut. reason I'm struggling a bit my hands are so red it is absolutely freezing I've got the heater on but uh, it's not doing a lot right ah so now I should be able to tighten that up against the key shouldn't I? Right. just nip that up It's absolutely rock solid. Now I've got the two bearings in. Wow, that's nice. So I need to tighten the handle. Right now the the gear end. So again I got a little key and we've got a little uh, little chamfer just at the top there. Yeah, you can see that in the light there. So we'll put that facing out and down, and again I can lever it out if I need to. That goes in there. That's our blind pocket just to stop it walking out. I don't think it will, but best to be safe. It'd be annoying if it fell out and onto the workshop floor, never to be seen again. Okay, that looks pretty snug in there. And then we'll just loosely put this on for now. And then we'll do this, uh, we'll put it in the correct position when it's on the machine so we can get the engagement correct. It's a bit, bit snugger than I want. Are we going to be able to move that? No. Okay. Let me just loosen that up. Right, I've just uh, dressed it up very slightly around the key. And now, yeah, it's quite a nice, nice fit. Right, so let's go and offer it up on the drill press and see if we can get the bevel gears to engage. Okay, if you look closely, you might see a machined a flat onto there. That will give the grub screw something to bite onto and stop it slipping around. So let's get that one on first. So we'll set it, um, just get it to grip a little bit, there we go. We'll set it quite low because we're not quite sure where the other one's going to end up. Okay, now, oop, here's the handle assembly. Okay, if we can get one screw in, that'll just hold it. There we go. Let's keep it loose for now, right, let's see how we're doing for mesh. And 
lift this up a bit. Oh, that's pretty good right there. Alright, let's tighten this one. Okay, now, uh, yeah, I think we've designed in a bit, a little bit of a problem here, which is uh, I can't quite get to the set screw. Um, it's not disastrous, so I think if that mesh feels all right. So what we'll do, we'll just back it out, tighten that up, and bring it back in and see what the mesh is like. So we'll just tighten this up now in that position. A lot easier without the camera in the way, but then you wouldn't be able to see, so we'll just make it work. It's super quiet, but in that mesh. I think that's going to be okay. We have movement. Excellent. Okay, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. It looks like it's going to work really well. It's a big milestone for the project to have the first mechanical part up and running. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to move the Z-axis up and down quite nicely. You can also see we've got the Banggood digital readout mounted there and one of the linear scales mounted at the back there. Uh, I went into detail about how that works and gave my review in the last video. So if you're interested in that, go and check that out. Okay, that wraps it up for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. It'd be great to hear what you think. And as always, Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.